Hey everybody, welcome. If you guys haven't seen this yet, this is my new, I think I'm gonna title it Photographer's Favorite Show. So today I have John Flagg on with me and the whole concept is I'm gonna bring other photographers on. We each pick five of our favorite photos of other photographers. So we're not yelling, look at me, look at me, look at me. We're showing off <laughs> everybody else's photos and we're just gonna go through them, tell you everything we like and why we chose them and kind of share the wealth. So with that, hey John, welcome. Hey, uh, Ray, great. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to join and you pick some great shots, man. I'm looking forward to Ooh, thank you. Thrown. Yeah. Right Although on. I got to say, I didn't look at them that much in depth. I like to try and see them a little fresh, but obviously Good. I kind of got to get things set, you know, so. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm ready to been... be surprised as well. Excellent. How long have you been doing wildlife photography? I started towards the end of 2017, I think is when I got my first camera. Okay, nice. uh, and, and told myself I was going to be a wildlife photographer uh, and kind of only ended up finding birds. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. I, be I became a birder uh, as okay. a result of that. Okay, yeah. nice. Where are you based out of? What area are you in? I'm in uh, Massachusetts, just okay. outside of Boston now. Um, so I shoot kind of around the coast and central Mass and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wherever I can. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, Northeast, not the best for mammals and other wildlife. I mean, there's other stuff around, but <laughs> no. yeah, birds are, yeah. If you want to keep shooting. Lots of shooting, squirrels. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, what you call it? Nice. You picked up an evening gross beak. They kind of showed up this year, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't they're huge neat? numbers. Yeah. 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 Such a gorgeous bird too. Yeah. That was just one male by himself. I was hoping oh, no, to kid. see a whole flock, but it was just, I think he was a juvenile, kind of a rough looking Gentleman. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, got a little plumage change going on there. But, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> hopefully there's more sticking around for you uh, as the season wears on. Mm -hmm. oh, gorgeous shot here too, man. Absolutely love that. Thank you. Yeah, I got Is that. That, recent? that that was from a couple of weeks ago. I've shared a okay. few other shots for that same owl. He was yeah. kind of hanging out in an area for a while, and I was fortunate enough uh, to be kind of the right place, at the right time, a few times. So nice, man. Dude, love the framing. Like with the tree branches, he's just like squared right in there. Right? How about that? Uh, don't make me blush, Ray. <laughs> yeah. Thank how you. Long, Thank you. I mean, but seriously, like how often do birds like an owl like that land in the right spot? Usually it was crap in front of them, behind them, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, right? Almost never. And this was yeah. like, believe it or not, um, less than a foot away from kind of a major pathway. And oh, really? There, were, there was no one else there. It was just me. Nice. Uh, and Good for you, I, I put it in the caption, but he was squawking at a great horned owl that had landed behind me that I didn't see. <laughs> um, and so it, it flew i saw him get very agitated and was looking yeah. around and i kind of backed up and it flew like right at me and passed me and started fighting with a great horned no and kidding. another and another bard behind me so uh, Dude, that was a what are you an owl central up there wow listen, that's I, crazy <laughs> No, uh, I yeah. was just as just as. Oh, this doesn't happen to you, you every week. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, no, only once in a lifetime, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Um, really surprising to hear a bard like tangling up with a great horn too. You know, I would think if anything they would flee, but that's that's pretty wild. Yeah, it had backup. You know, it had its mate with them, and gotcha. uh, the, yeah. the two of them. I think they're kind of their territories are just almost overlapping a bit. Must so, be. Yeah. yeah, a little scrap. Wow. What an experience, man. Very yeah. cool. All right. You ready to get into it? Let's go. All right. Cool. So we're going to start with the first one that you chose here from Corey Nimmer. Dude, mm -hmm. look at this little guy. Little piping plover chick. I'm assuming piping plover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, absolutely love the backlight. My favorite lighting style. And mm -hmm. uh, Corey nailed it here. And uh, uh, bonus, to Cor bonus points for Corey for leaving it small in the frame. You know? Uh, yes. I think it's so... Um, so likely for most people to kind of just zoom in on the little guy. It's adorable. Why wouldn't you? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But this, this kind of shot really to me accentuates the size of this bird and almost the, um, the struggle that it has to live like it, this, this tiny bird in the giant world kind of thing. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, when you leave him small in the frame like that, I think it kind of pushes that story a little bit more and, and makes you feel kind of a little bit how helpless this bird can be. Um, meanwhile, when you watch him in person running around, they're not that helpless those things are so damn fast it's insane yeah yeah yeah, yeah but uh beautiful shot man and love his uh, the, the composition's just perfect there so yeah Corey's Corey's one of the best doing it around here you know uh i was really tempted to start shooting pipe, uh, piping piping plowers when i kind of got into this 
thing for a bit and uh, yeah. I found his page pretty quickly and he, okay. you know it's it's a pretty good lesson on how to shoot plover chicks just looking through yeah. his photos yeah. um he did he does a lot of these backlit shots and they just kind of they glow you know in with those little those little tiny feathers the little downy um, stuff yeah totally yeah and I, I i totally agree with you if you get a shot where it's the bird is in the whole frame you have no idea that they're only a couple of inches tall yeah so this yeah. uh the wide angle really works i think it really does. And no doubt the close-ups are cute, but yeah, this, this to me tells a little bit more of a story. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've photographed these birds before? Yeah. Yeah. There's a few spots, um, you know, and sometimes they run almost into your camera. So it's to get crazy, a shot like it? this. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think I've, I've only spent maybe two seasons with them uh, the past few years. I just haven't bothered. I've been working with other stuff, but um, mm -hmm. The fr I still remember this day. I mean, at this point, it's like five years ago, the first time I photographed them. And I still remember to this day, the first time I saw a piping plover chick and I was just like, holy shit, look at this thing go. It's so fast <laughs> and so tiny. Yeah. You're just like, what the heck? I mean, you just see this, this little thing just like zipping around the beach. You're like, what the heck? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My first time I saw him, I saw a couple of the adults running around. It was like, all right, so where are the chicks? And I kept seeing like I thought it was trash blowing on the beach or something. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. It's, it's like, oh, they're right there, I guess. Yeah. Okay. That's them. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Here's one for you. What do you think? Wow. What a shot. Is that a pygmy yep. owl? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. I love the eye contact. Looks like he's really uh, yep. peering, peering right into him. That's awesome. Yeah. The vertical frame is, is good, too. I don't shoot a lot of vertical yeah, me neither. Yeah, I don't but think I many think of it really works here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think I think with the with the sort of the vertical tree there yep. and the size of the bird, it really sells it in the in the vertical shot. Yeah, it definitely does. That's awesome. And then and then that uh, that perch with the talons all just kind of grabbing it there, and you know, uh, yeah. similarly to what I was just talking about with your barred owl shot, right? Just framed perfectly, just sitting right mm -hmm. in that space, you know. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I and really, go ahead. No, it was just nothing in the way too either. I mean, yeah, what a what yeah. a great spot for it to land. I know. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and then lighting wise too, you know, soft looks pretty much overcast light, but it still has some direction to it. You know, a little bit brighter on this side, a little bit darker on that side, so it gives a little mm -hmm. bit of shape to the owl. Uh, it gives a little bit of shape to the background and the perch. Right, everything over here a little bit darker mostly. This side lighter, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. lighting wise doesn't get much better than that. So. Uh, and yeah, I very much agree with your assessment on the vertical composition. I think uh, this perch really lends for that vertical nature. I mean, imagine if we just kind of crop out the horizontal here. You know, number one, we'd probably lose the bottom of these, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, it just wouldn't have the same feel, right? Yeah, and I was kind of standing really upright. I don't think I've seen You're a right. shot of them. Yeah, like he's like on his toes or something. Usually they're yeah, it's like, it's like a out. round ball. It, they yeah. are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great point, actually. Yeah. It's funny. Isn't it great? This is what I love about this, right? So uh, talking to people like yourself, you point out some, pointed out something that I didn't even notice at first. And as soon as you point out, it's painfully obvious. It's like, oh yeah, I think I probably did register that, you know, uh, but mm -hmm. it just wasn't, it wasn't right there consciously in the forefront. Um, and that again, points to vertical composition really helping out in this shot. So that's awesome. Nice. I love it. Great thoughts. <laughs> Well done, John. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Ooh, all this right. Is one. Yeah, I love this shot, man. Um, all these gross beaks are beautiful, but uh, a pine I've never seen, but what beautiful color. And just in the perfect habitat for what you kind of expect for a pine gross beak, you know, just mm. getting them in that winter wonderland, with the snow f actually falling too. And, you know, Maxim processed it. It's kind of like still lighter. It doesn't look like like a dark, heavy, overcast, snowy day, right? It's just like still bright and kind of airy uh, feel to it, which is really nice. And the snow is still falling, so you know, just all that is a lot, uh, a lot of uh, good positive things for this photo. And the other thing that really stands out to me is just the pose of the bird. Uh, you know, with songbird mm -hmm. portraits, to me it's so important to have an engaging pose on and posture like this on the bird. And this yeah. is really, it's like leaning in, you know, it's almost direct eye contact. In fact, it is direct eye contact with uh, the subject here. And it just really 
uh, just zeroes you right in onto that bird, nothing else. You're looking right at its face, making that eye contact yourself as the viewer. So all those things just kind of uh, packaged together for a beautiful shot, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, his his whole page kind of makes me want to move to Canada, to be honest. His, <laughs> right? he, he just absolutely sells this, like, winter wonderland yeah. sort of uh, experience. The falling snow is really, like, I got to get out and shoot snow in snow more. Yeah. You know, we had such a dry winter here the last couple of Did years. You? This year. Yeah. yeah. But it's a, such a great shot. And the, the colors really kill it as well. The yes. kind of muted background just, like, totally makes that bird pop. Yeah, right. Almost no other color. I mean, there's a hint of green in the pine mm -hmm. here, but almost no other color in the shot, right? It's basically a black and white except for that splash of yeah. red. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the perch is beautiful. like, you know, a little, I don't know if it's like a spruce or something. It looks like they're just mm -hmm. holding the snow is so nice. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Love it. Another awesome one. All right. Next up. Wow. Oh, man. What is it? <laughs> I can't. I got to look. Black neck stilts. Oh, there's stilts? That's killer. Yeah. I love the. Uh... The reflection is it almost makes like a perfect circle there on the yep. on the horizon. That's so yep. that's such a good shot. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, where is it? Utah. So this is this like a salt flat? Is that what? Yeah, most likely. Yep. That's great, man. Yeah. I saw I've seen stilts once out in California, but I couldn't get any any shots. But the the cool uh, birds, such a cool bird, and really highlights kind of the those legs and yeah the the pose. That's great. Yeah, it really does. The uh, yeah that that reflection and the one bird just being up in the air like that is what the first thing that really stood out to me. Yeah, it almost looks like it could be a, a composite of some of one bird kind of jumping yeah. up and down. Yeah, like a sequence shot, right? It's clearly yeah. not. Yeah, it's but it's sure. cool to see like almost this passage of time happening. But it's yep. it's one it's three different birds. It is. Yeah, and I mean the scenery. Right. This this is one of those I know I've talked about it a few times on this show. Uh, where the shot is kind of like uh, it's a beautiful shot without wildlife in it <laughs> you know right, right. and, and that so that when you add wildlife or birds into it on top of that and they and they work well with the shot and add to it or become the main subject uh, mm -hmm. I think that really that really kind of um, tells how much the photographer was thinking about the shot and and how mm -hmm. all those pieces came together it's not just a good bird photo it's not just a beautiful landscape photo uh, having them both combined like that is uh, an incredibly difficult thing to do number one and when it's done well it just really stands out and shines so yeah yeah and the sky is pretty dramatic but not in like an overly distracting or contrasty yep. sort of way you know i think that really helps yeah definitely and uh, from what I've heard, it does say right here the Great Salt Lake. So yeah, just oh, yeah. on those uh, salt flats. Um, from what I've heard, getting down low and getting nasty, and that is all about getting nasty. It's apparently like one hell of a smell <laughs> getting oh, down oh. in some of those those salt <laughs> flats. So I think uh, in this case, uh, Clinton worked for it. So <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only yeah. imagine. Yeah. All right, on to the next. Keeping with the owl mm. theme. Nice. Uh, look at this. I mean, adorable, just ridiculous. Two of them. You know what's amazing? The first thing is that they almost just perfectly blend into the trunk. You know, like if yeah. you obviously, if you didn't know the nest was there, so easy to just pass right by these birds and have no clue they were there. Um, so yeah, that's just absolutely incredible. And um, yeah, I think we had another photo on this show earlier with from Kyle that somebody else yeah. chose. And funny. I actually remember the composition on that one was the same with a heavy uh, out of focus yeah. tree yeah. on the right side that kind of like led you into there. So uh, Kyle, I think I'm on to your uh, style here. <laughs> <laughs> Big giant tree out of focus in the foreground, right third of the frame. Mm -hmm. But I got to mm -hmm. say it works. Um, and then the splash of green. So to me, the green, the green leaves make it. They really do mm -hmm. make a shot. Listen, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful shot without them, but that really takes it to the next level. Uh, mm -hmm. The perfect framing there, it gives depth to the photo. It really does. Uh, instead of just having that, uh, you know, just single plane of birds and the tree that they're in, right? Um, this gives depth, but not quite the same way because it, it disappears in the shot, whereas oh. the green really kind of stands out. And um, in kind of the reverse of the, uh, the photo from Maxim, the uh, pine grow speak, right? Um, mm -hmm. Everything else in this photo is black and white except for the color in those leaves. Yet, it still doesn't seem to distract from the photo to me, like the subject, I should say. 
Yeah. Yeah, I he does this, you know, I shamelessly am trying to steal his his style as well. Kyle's yeah. so good at this like uh, almost almost voyeuristic or like Yeah. you know, that's the kind of experience that I think is really special about nature nature photography like Yep. feeling like you're walking through the woods and then you see something kind of incredible and, and the fact that we're just kind of peeking around the tree at these these two little gremlins as he calls them yeah is, is such a killer such a killer shot i'm so jealous of this one yeah awesome point john i think that's one of the huge things that playing with foreground framing and stuff like that does right it gives that voyeuristic appeal it mm -hmm. gives that it gives the viewer the chance to feel like they're there viewing it versus mm -hmm. just the clean straight ahead shot which is a little bit more i think accepted of being this is uh this is just a clean photo you know mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. so yeah it uh that's a really good point yeah i, I really like that that take on it yeah. all right there you go oh no you're pulling out the vertical shots tonight huh uh, yeah i guess so this is, <laughs> this is nice uh what are we looking at yeah this is uh from out. kenya um I don't know my African species that well. Yeah, me neither. I so. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if she actually uh, put the species in there. Uh, I'll keep looking while you take oh. a look at the photo. Yeah, yeah it's that's a, such a great shot. I mean, another awesome sky. But I love the uh, just the the that cl the clean line of the of the ground there with this the silhouette of the bird. Uh, the the bird. <laughs> yeah, what, whatever it is, that's that's great. Yeah. <clears throat> yep, some kind of antelope species, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. yeah, it doesn't doesn't say here, but uh, yeah, those guys. And you know, it's funny. I don't, I don't know if I just recently talked to Amy on an episode of the the regular audio podcast, and mm -hmm. I don't think that episode came out yet. Um, but uh, in talking to her, and I've heard it from many people. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but they all say like the sunsets in Africa. There's like nothing like them, you know. Yeah. And uh, I certainly haven't experienced it for myself yet, but they're they're starting to make me lean in the direction of wanting to go there based on how they keep talking about these sunsets. Uh, cause I got to tell you, like Africa honestly is pretty low on my list of places to go. Now, yeah. if I got the chance, obviously I'm going, it's not like I'm like, right. no, I don't want to go, but uh, right. there's just other places I, I kind of have a little bit higher up, but mm -hmm. um, anyway, back to this photo. Yeah. The colors and also the, the leading lines in the cloud here mm -hmm. uh, kind of really just like that curve this curve kind of all just pointing in this direction uh the darker top darker bottom lightest area right here where the subject is and then it's such a clear silhouette up on top of the grasses there nothing yeah. distracting you know so even that small in the frame uh, i mean if we look at this photo percentage wise that that um that wildlife takes up maybe five percent of the pixels in the photo right. Right? right if that yet yep. it's still painfully obvious that's the subject mm -hmm. and uh and also great job to not she didn't even come close to oversaturating these colors like you know how mm -hmm. easy it can be to just grab oh, a yeah. saturation go to 50 you know <laughs> crank it up and see what happens yeah. exactly yeah with something that has colors like this but these are still they're vivid but kind of muted you know they're not mm -hmm. like overdriven and mm -hmm. so yeah i think all of that just really makes it stand out as uh, just a beautiful shot and the compositions amy is so good with these spacious compositions leaving space using all that space properly and mm -hmm. uh, yeah it certainly shows yeah i this is a really good example too where there there's those little small details like the blades of grass like, i think like really yeah. really does it you know yep. and even though they are so small the fact that they're they're coming through is like just just having those small details even if they're there's only a couple of them, I think, really is what sets it over the top. Definitely. And when a photo is so beautiful and kind of eye-catching right up front, it gives you time to stick with it and find those details. You yeah. know, um, so, so We see so much online every day. It's so easy to just kind of, you know, great, move, bye, bye, yeah, bye. Yeah. But then a shot like this, for me anyway, it comes up and I'm just like, oh, wow, like this stands out amongst the sea of photos that I'm scrolling mm -hmm. through each day. And, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you get time to, to kind of really take that photo in. And I think, like you said, those – little details of like the grass that just helps set the location a little bit more you know you can see yeah. it's just out in the grasslands and um you know if we knew what species it was and knew the species and a little bit more about it we'd probably understand that anyway but uh, yeah. this photo tells that anyway so awesome dude nice man what a what a portrait of a fox it's got the ears back which is hilarious like such, such a different look to it um 
And I would love to hear the story behind what it was doing uh, when he took this shot. Well, but, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it just gives the indication. I want, Whenever I see mammals with their ears back like that, it's usually just there's something going on behind them that they're listening to, <laughs> you know? And they're yes. so good at doing that with their ears versus like turning their head. They'll just point their ears back and listen that way. Like I put... So many times I've photographed deer walking away from me and their ears are still pointed back at me. I'm like, oh, you're still listening. Mm. <laughs> uh, mm. So, yeah, that really stands out right up front. And uh, just that low eye level perspective, super soft light. The eye contact is great. And whatever it's on is kind of really pretty there, actually. it look, I don't know. It almost looks like a like a lichen mossy covered rock. But now the more I look at yeah. it, it may be, be it might be like an old kind of road like. uh that just has a little grass coming through it. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know, but yeah. Oh, in, yeah, this, in the parking lot. Okay. This is such a special shot. If you, can you go to the previous photo? Yeah. So it, it stole his speaker. It stole, <laughs> this is, this is Nick. He's, he's an excellent birder in, in Massachusetts and oh he was God. shooting. It, it ran over and stole his Bluetooth and took off. Oh yeah. I see that. He says that. Uh, and apparently sold it on eBay. I think. Yeah. But, and then, and then he still got this incredible shot. So, you know, shout out, shout out to Nick. This is to, to lose your speaker, but he came away with such a beautiful uh, shot of his Fox. I love it. He's got, yeah. it's got all those little furs hanging out in the wind with some awesome light on them. The dark background really um, helps set the Fox off too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that definitely is good. And uh, I love his little nickname for it, Klepto Fox. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just saw that now. Yeah, you know, it's one of those. Th I haven't had any animals steal anything from me yet, but you know, it's I one of those. <laughs> one of those kind of things that makes it special. You know, have you had any woods. surprisingly close encounters with any wildlife, birds, mammals, anything like that? Oh, uh, as we were saying earlier, just that that owl that almost hit me the other day was one. Um, nice, but nothing, nothing like this. Definitely nothing like this. Last year, I went to scout for the hooded mergansers at a local pond, mm -hmm. uh, beginning of the season, and I drove all the way there and forgot, I think I forgot my entire camera, uh, something stupid like that, you know? So oh, I get there, I'm like, well, I got to scout anyway, so I'll just sit here. So get in the camo hide, just, I sit back up again, sure, normally I'm laying down prone to get the low angle shot, but I didn't have the camera, so I'm like, yeah, I'll just sit here and be comfy today. So sit up. And it's in the dark. I always get in well before sunrise. And then all of a sudden, so there's also a local beaver on this pond. So I see him swimming around, slaps his tail when I walk in, all pissed off mm -hmm. at me. That calms down. And then I hear some more commotion off to my right. I look over. I'm like, and it's just barely light enough that I can start to see some stuff now, but not real clearly. And I'm like, oh, crap, it's a raccoon. That's cool. Um, I've never seen one in that area. Mm -hmm. It hops in the water, swims over, and it comes out. And it's like I'm on like this little kind of almost island that I, uh, is just elevated out of the water that I can lay on. And it starts coming towards me <laughs> and coming closer <laughs> and closer. I'm like, oh, shit, this thing's going to come like right. It's going to like walk over top. It comes right up. And like I'm sitting there with my boots up like this. And it comes up and puts its nose like right on my boot. And now it's like sniffing. And then it's doing one of these like you've you've seen pets do it, right? Where they, yeah. they kind of smell something. They're like, something ain't right here, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so it's doing that. And I didn't want it to just like walk on me. So I just moved <laughs> my foot a little bit. And it kind of it kind of jumped back, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it moved. But then it stayed and I moved my foot a little more. And then it just kind of like didn't freak, but it was just like, yeah, something ain't right. And it turned around and just walked away. <laughs> yeah, and that's like, so funny. It was so weird. It was so cool to just be completely hidden. The only thing it could tell about me being there was probably smell. That's the only thing mm -hmm. that kind of gave me away, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if not for that, it probably would have just walked on right on by and had no clue. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of kind of special to have that happen. And, uh it, fine, I didn't have my camera because it was too close to photograph anyway. So yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where you know you're so quiet all the time, you don't see anything, and then and you're or something, you scare it away, and then every once in a while, one wolf comes steal your speaker or smell <laughs> you and smell your boot. It's like, what is going on? Here? Yeah, yeah. And then any other time you're trying to photograph the stuff. I mean, lucky for Nick, he did get the shot right. Mm -hmm. uh, but so many times something like that'll happen, and you don't get a shot anyway. So yeah. 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 But you still always get the cool experience, so. Wow. Uh, yeah. 
This is a, is it a Grady? Uh, I think so. Um, yeah, it looks not like sure it. If it has a species listed there, but definitely looks yeah. like. Well, it's from Sweden, so oh, okay. uh, it might be a you know, similar species over there. Yeah. Distant, distant relative. At yeah, least, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This All is the same, great. different I, name. I love the, just the, the losing the horizon there is so cool. You know, yeah. I mean, a little, a little faintly you can see it, but like, that is, that's such a, it's a tough shot to get. I mean, your conditions really have to be pretty right for that to happen. Very specific conditions. You're right. Yeah. 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 And uh, that great pose too. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot working in this photo. That I like. Yeah. She is so good at, I mean, if you look through her feed, every single shot is almost, I should I think everyone I can recall is so graphically beautiful. She just mm -hmm. has this way and whatever this location she shot um, with these boulders that kind of are sparse and spaced out that just add these other interesting elements to it uh, and give, you know, give just a little bit of something more to it than just the bird in the photo. Uh, but mm -hmm. I just see it over and over again from her. It's, uh, it, it's just, it's an incredible style. And I think she only, she seems to really favor certain conditions and that sort of thing. So uh, just incredible mm -hmm. photo though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. She's got the, both of the rocks looks like, kind of equidistant from the edges of the frame and yeah. that bird is like right in the middle like that's yeah. that's pretty good taking off in just the right direction you got yeah. the splash backlit there it's kind of that in-between silhouette thing that you can get with heavy backlight but through fog so it softens mm -hmm. the light and so yeah it's just mm -hmm. like yeah darn people get yeah, in their lucky conditions <laughs> I know, that, that's killer man i get jealous <laughs> yeah i know i gotta start shooting more like silhouette stuff or rim light stuff that's like uh something i don't do enough i think yeah it's uh it's something i i certainly seek out often but yeah. uh for for me actually and so especially like with shorebirds and stuff i actually have to kind of concentrate to start shooting other stuff because i get so <laughs> zeroed in on that because that's just my yeah. favorite thing to shoot um so i definitely have to make sure i pay attention to branching out and shooting other things because other things can be great too but mm -hmm. uh it is it is fun even though it, i find it challenging as well i think that's mm -hmm. part of the fun yeah nice snowy on the dunes man classic excellent queen of the hill that's funny oh nice another up in your area there yeah yeah nice nice um beautiful tones in the background great light on the bird um it really tells the story of where the, the bird is, too. It's just a classic, you know, uh, northeastern beach dunes uh, with that grass growing out of it. And it is nice to see it in great light. I mean, when snowy owls hit in our area, I'm sure, as you know, the Instagram and your local follows just get flooded with mm -hmm. snowy owl photos. Mm -hmm. And you know, certainly one of the things I see so often just because it requires spending a lot of time out there is just, you know, harsh, nasty, strong sun coming in and just not really pretty colors. And mm -hmm. this one certainly bucks that trend in that it's got some really nice light. And even though the owl's resting there, it kind of has that peaceful vibe to it, right? With it just kind of yeah. chilling, it's not being disturbed. Um, and then the clouds really add something to this, right? So it's not just a plain blue sky back there. It's got a little uh, purple tone to it and just kind of breaks up that, that even blue sky back there. So uh, all, all comes together nicely, I'd say. Yeah, I uh, I agree, man. I think that this is the only way to shoot snowies is is either you know early early morning or just at sunset because yeah, I th they're kind of like the gateway drug for for owl photographers, <laughs> right? And, and owl nerds like me because they they show up like the same time every year. Yeah, you can pretty much find them in a similar place every year. You can see them in the daytime. Yeah, so that's there's helpful. A, there's a there's a lot of shots from people standing standing up or at you know. Uh, less than ideal conditions and they are too harsh and i really i like this shot so much because because of the background because of the, the colors and that sort of like cotton candy looking sky yep yeah i think and this is a this is like the habitat like you said you know that with the quintessential sort of new england dunes yep sea grass stuff I'm a, I'm a bit of a sucker for it yeah yeah it is a nice look it really is uh do you spend a lot of time going after the snowy owls when they show up are you a fan yeah, yeah, I was out okay. there yesterday. I had, oh, no, I had two, yeah, I had two yesterday, and then I got a flat tire, so I had a, a bit of a shorter. I saw shorter that on day. your story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, oh man, but you had that, some owls. Yeah, we had two, but it was you know it was like it was what I was saying. You know, they were not in great spots, and it was it was bright, and it, I couldn't really get anything that I was super happy with. But it's nice to see them. And it's totally. looking like 
it's a good start to the year already. Yeah, but, yeah. I guess that's pretty pretty good kickoff, right? Yeah. Yeah, nice. And you got to spend the time out there to get the right shots. You know, like exactly. you can't just uh, you can't always just kind of show up just once or twice and then and then get some really good shots. You know, uh, no, when that does happen, not. it's nice. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's cheating when that happens, I think. It does feel that way sometimes. Yeah. And it also it also makes me feel like, um, oh, these are just easy to do. You know, I've totally had that where like first mm -hmm. time out, you try for something oh, yeah. and, and you just nail it. And you're like, oh, okay, this is great. And then for the next four years, you just struggle to get even anything remotely that good. You're like, what happened? I oh, guess yeah. it kind of re reminds you of how lucky you got that first time, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, hilarious mm -hmm. when that happens. <laughs> They are captivating owls. I've only ever tried for them I, one year. We had like a good year down here, and I finally relented and went for them. Um, and uh, it was fun. Yeah, it was neat to see them. So, but yeah, cool. had a lot of fun. All right, last shot. Oh man! <laughs> wow, what a that's a killer shot. Yeah. Uh, the uh, you know usually it's having all those branches in the shot is totally totally distracting and i think ruins it but it, it the opposite it's the absolute right? opposite effect here yeah that's that's really that's really well done i can't believe that they found a window like that and yeah. then apparently hired these two birds or glued them to the <laughs> branch and then set this up because that's, <laughs> that's that's total georgina yeah that's exactly i don't believe this shit. <laughs> no, no that's it that's that's killer that Have is you really nice have you ever tried to photograph birds silhouetted like towards the sun or even like this in the sun? Have you done that yet? Uh, I haven't had that much luck with it, you know. Okay. Uh, I, I, it's on the list, but I'm usually like uh, doing other things, I guess, or, okay. or, or striking out at that time. I sure. don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the first thing that stood out to me, number one, great, right? It's just a beautiful shot. Uh, birds silhouetted in the sun is such an amazing achievement. And I know because of how many times I've tried it um, and I've yeah. succeeded sometimes, but the failure rate is so high on this because everything has to line up perfectly. You know, the birds have to be cooperative. The height has to be right. I tend to do it more often with shorebirds and birds in the marsh. I don't right. know. I don't think I've ever done it with birds that perch up on branches. Uh, I shouldn't say that I have, but that's even more rare for me. Um, and so, yeah, just getting everything to line up is crazy. And what, what I, learned by doing this is how fast that damn sun moves when it gets really low in the sky you know mm -hmm. it's it's you watch it up high and it's like oh yeah the sun's just kind of taking its time getting where it's got to go but when it gets low everything happens so fast like you, you have to line up and the sun will be above it and you'll you'll instinctively line up like okay the sun's going to come down on it. oh no the sun's going to go way to the side as it comes down right. on it so you have to kind of judge that angle and constantly shift positions and i mean it's a lot of work to get things to line up and then sometimes you'll get it to line up and the bird faces straight at you or fa faces straight away right and you mm -hmm. don't see the bill mm -hmm. so it's just like a blob you know and you're like ah come on you know so the birds then have to profile. And then on top of this, you're right. She finds this opening through all this mess of branches to get the shot. And they help by actually darkening everything around it, really zeroing right. your eye in They're Even at F 11, which she had to shoot because the sun's so damn bright. Um, they're still out of focus enough that she was able to, you know, they're not distracted. I think if these branches were all in focus, they might be a distraction, but they're out yeah. of focus enough that they're not. And, uh, and then having the pair of them, like nestled together like that in the sun. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Like that's just insane. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at those settings. That's a, that's a bright sun at F11 yep. and uh, 6,400, you know, that's, yep. that's pretty, pretty impressive. You know, it, it came out, this came out so clean and that, uh, the branch, the perch are on also really, I think helps, you know, that, it's really that's really nice. Pretty solid line kind of pulling it right into the, right into the sun, man. That's a great shot some good stuff yeah georgina is uh, always a great follow so mm. she's always busting out some amazing stuff so mm. john we did it that's it great stuff man hey hey we did it yeah thank you so thank much you. for coming on yeah it was great talking to you great getting to know you hopefully one of these days we can meet up actually shoot together in person that'd be fun let's go find some snowies come on up ray give it a little drive on up yeah, here 
cobblefish. <laughs> and you know what? I got to tell you, I am so crazy busy right now. I think I have like three days open uh, that aren't booked between now and mid-December. And then I'm heading down to Florida to, for the mm-hmm. entire month of January. So <laughs> uh, uh, not a bad problem to have. Not a bad problem. But I, I, I will say, listen, when I get down there, I do love it. But the, there is totally a part of me that kind of misses the little winter action we get up here. And, and where yeah. I live down here in Jersey, it's kind of we – if we get snow in a year, it's not real common, you know? So mm-hmm. I rarely mm-hmm. get to shoot in snow. And then sometimes I hear about these big snowstorms while I'm down there. I'm kind of like, oh, you know? But yeah. then I walk outside in my shorts and sandals and I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, it's not the worst. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. Worst. Yeah, I get over yeah. it quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm falling up into my waist and in, uh, in snow and ice. Right. And pulling yeah. it out of my boots. but Struggling right. for the shot. But yeah. It's all right. Yep. Yeah. It can be beautiful. So, um, thanks. Thank you. Thank you again for joining me. Uh, really look forward to seeing what you have coming up and thanks everybody for watching. Love it. Have a good one.